I hear you have a plan to save the world? Yes, Peter, I do. And this plan comes from the very top. Your father? My heavenly father. Well, this ought to be a pretty good plan. It's actually the perfect plan. Okay, great. So, how many swords are we gonna need? Whoa, careful, you're gonna cut someone's ear off with that thing. Yikes, wouldn't want to do that. Why do you have that anyway? Well, we're gonna need swords to overthrow the Roman Empire, right? Oh, actually, no. No swords. Okay, spears then? Nope. Arrows? None at all. What about shurikens? What are those? <laughs> I have no idea. No, you see, the great thing about this plan is that we don't need any weapons of any kind. No weapons of any kind? Of any kind. Huh. Oh, I get it. So you're gonna, like, call down an army of angels then? Well, I could do that. You should do that. I could call more than 12 legions of angels. That's 72,000 angels. Yeah, that's quite a lot of angels. That would be awesome. But I'm not gonna do that. You're not? It's not part of the plan. Is this a political campaign? Oh, absolutely not. An assassination? Definitely not. A protest march? Nope, nope, and nope. Okay, so what is the plan? Well, I'm going to lay down my life. Come again? I'm going to give my life as a sacrifice. You're going to die? That's the plan. Like, when you're old? Mm, sooner than that. Peacefully? In your sleep? No. No, it's gonna be painful. Okay, so how is dying gonna help save the Hebrews from Rome? Oh, this isn't just for Israel. It's for everyone. Everyone? Everyone, everywhere. Well, that doesn't seem fair. It's not. It's grace. So... You're just gonna leave us? You're just gonna... Abandon your people? Oh, no. No, Peter. I'm going to rise again. You are? Yeah. To prove that death is defeated. After how long? Three days tops. You promise? I promise. Okay. Oh. Hey, Judas. Wait a minute. What are all these soldiers doing here? Don't worry. It's part of the plan. Good morning. Aren't you glad that God has a plan? Yes, amen. As we celebrate Easter weekend, this is a big weekend for us. A um, couple of announcements before we get started here. Um, today we have the procession of hope, uh, which um, Pastor Jerry will explain to you in a little bit. Um, also, the chosen viewing party. Um, they're going to change the time. They used to do it at 4 or 4.30. Now they're going to do season 2, April 6th, but it's going to start at 6.30. So if you've um, been going to that, you know how fantastic it is. If you have not seen The Chosen, I encourage you to do that. It is uh, a phenomenal show. Uh, tomorrow, we have our Easter celebration. We start in here at 9.15. You want to be here at 9.15 for worship. And then at 10 o'clock sharp, we will start the festivities outside, and you're not going to want to miss that. So please come tomorrow at 9.15. Uh, open Windows Ministry, uh, the Widows Ministry, is moving. Their room is going to be now in 203. So if you want to be part of that group, they want you to know that they're moving, and they're going to room 203. Next Friday night, we have a concert here. It's not, we're not putting it on, we're just hosting it. Southern Adventist University is bringing in Andrew Peterson, um, but because we're allowing them to use our facility, they're giving our members free tickets. So you do need a ticket, but it's not gonna cost you anything, but you're gonna need a code. You have to go online and you'll type in this code and it'll give it to you for free. But Rosa Ashley, our secretary, has that code. So you have to call her to get the code, and then you can go online and get your free ticket. Anyway, that's this Friday, this coming Friday, uh, here at the church. Um, if you want to connect with the pastoral staff or the office, please fill out your Connect card. They're in front of you in the, in the pew. 
Um, you can put your name and email address and all that fun stuff. If you want to have Bible studies, you want to transfer your membership, or if on the back you want to have a prayer request, uh, we take these very seriously. We pray over them every week. And so please fill those out and put them in the back. Uh, when you walk out in the back, we don't take an offering. Uh, we don't pass a bucket to take an offering. We do take an offering. Um, it's in the back, and as you leave with the baskets and the, by the doors, you can put your tithe and offering there, and then you can also put your uh, Connect cards in there, and they will get to us. All right, let's start our worship service with a word of prayer, so I invite those who are able and willing to kneel. Father in heaven, Lord, we are so grateful that you had a plan, that you had a plan to redeem us, and we cannot say thank you enough. And Lord, we just want to pause right now, and we're going to say one thing that we're thankful for to you privately. And now, Lord, we're going to offer one prayer request privately to you. Lord, we thank you for answering and hearing our prayers. We thank you in advance for doing that. And Lord, now as we open up this worship service, we invite your presence. We invite your Holy Spirit and your holy angels to fill this sanctuary that we may be connected to you in a way that we've never been connected before. We ask that you would open our minds and our hearts to receive the truths that you have for us today and that you would change us for eternity. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to draw your attention to the baptismal tank. Pastor Jerry has a couple people he kind of knows. Decided to want to be baptized today. I want to be baptized to publicly show my love for Jesus. To me, to accept Jesus as my Savior means saying yes to Him and accepting the gift of eternal life. My advice to you if you don't know Jesus is to pray that He would reveal Himself. Even if your faith is as small as a mustard seed, He will take it and do amazing things. My name is Hallie Arnold and I've seen God work in my life. Hi, my name is Hensley Arnold, and today I'm wanting to share why I'm excited to be baptized. I want to be baptized to show my love for Jesus. I've always wanted to be baptized, but this year and last year especially, I have been thinking about it more and wanting to do it more. Just seeing all of the people that have been baptized and um, hearing about people being baptized made me think, oh, I could get baptized too. My advice to anyone is to choose Jesus because he will walk beside you every step of the way. Thank you so much for coming and supporting me. It means a lot to me. My name is Hensley Arnold and I have seen God work in my life. being baptized today, but they also want to join the Seventh-day Adventist Church and specifically College Dell Community Church. So uh, is there a motion to accept them as members subject to their baptism? There's a motion. Is there a second? All in favor say aye. Aye. Should have said amen. It sounds holier. <laughs> Yesterday the girls asked me, what happens if somebody votes no? I said I will show them the exit. <laughs> so you guys are accepted. Is that good? All right. I want you to join me in prayer as I pray for these girls. Loving Father in heaven, they've asked you into their hearts. And they're following your teachings by being baptized. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will do something special for them, that you will touch them in a way that they will never, ever forget. May they sense your love, your cleansing presence in their hearts, and may they know beyond a shadow of a doubt you have said 
you love them and they will experience that. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Allie, because you love Jesus, it is an honor and a privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because you love the Lord, it is my honor and privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. All right, time for a children's story. Come on down. Good morning. Good to see each and every one of you here this morning. Do you want to move down here so that you can see a little better? Maybe down here on this step would be good. Do you want to move over and join us? Oh, that's nice. Thank you. Boys and girls, you know that the Bible says a lot of how important love is. Yes, indeed. You know, there's something else that's important, too, that the Bible teaches us, and that's determination. Do you know what determination means? Yes. I'm sorry? When you put your mind on something. When you put your mind on something. Very good. I hope as you listen to this story, you'll understand about determination. It was a hot, muggy summer evening in Spencer, Indiana, and it was the third day of the Owen County Fair. Joshua and his family had been invited to the Owen County Fair by Mr. Gary and Miss Linda. Mr. Gary knew all about the fairgrounds, and he knew just the events that Josh and his family would be interested in. And one such event was the Bunny Run. The Bunny Run was a competition for children ages three to six years old. And the prize that the children could win was a bunny, a snuggly, cuddly, wiggly-nosed, flopping-eared bunny, a real live one for children three to six years old. Big sister Hannah wanted a bunny, but she was almost 10. Big brother Jeremy wanted a bunny, 
but he had just turned eight years old. Joshua wanted a bunny. He was three and a half. Yes, he could participate in the bunny run event. Now, it worked like this. On one, there was a great big field. Have you ever been to a football game or seen a big football field? Oh, it was a big field. And down at one end of the field were bunny hutches filled with snuggly, cuddly bunnies. Way down on the other end of the field was a big, bold line painted on the ground. And behind that line, children were going to line up. And at the appointed time, the bell would ring and open, the doors would fly from those bunny hutches. And those little bunnies would hop out. And the children at the other end would race down, try to be the first to get there to get a little bunny. And they could keep it if they could catch it. Have you ever had a bunny in your yard? Yes? Have you ever tried to walk up to the bunny, try to get as close as you can, and what happened? Were you able to get very close? What would happen? <laughs> he just like hopped away. That is right. It is not easy to catch a little bunny. But you know what? Joshua was determined. What was he? Determined. Very good. Thank you. What was Joshua? Was he determined? Yeah. What was he? he determined. Determined. Okay, Joshua wanted a little bunny. Well, Mr. Gary took Joshua by the hand, and he took him down to the big field to get ready for the bunny run event. And when Joshua got to the big field, he looked up, and he saw big bleachers. And there were lots and lots of people in those bleachers. And they were looking right down. It seemed like they were looking right down at Joshua. Do you like it when people are staring at you? Oh, Joshua didn't like it at all. He was shy. Oh, dear. Should he stay there and participate in the bunny run event? Oh, yes. Joshua was determined. He wanted a bunny. Mr. Gary let go of his hand, and he said, I'm going to wait right out here outside of this fence. They won't let me stay inside the field here. I'll wait for you out here. And Joshua was alone. His mommy wasn't there. His daddy wasn't there. Big sister Hannah wasn't there. Big brother Jeremy wasn't there. He didn't like to be alone. It was scary. Oh, dear. Should he just not participate? Oh, no. Joshua was determined. He wanted a bunny. And then more and more children started coming down to line up behind that big, bold line. And they were big kids. They were probably six years old. You remember, Joshua's just three and a half. These were, they looked like big, burly boys to Joshua and gargantuan girls. They were big kids. Did Joshua stand a chance against big six-year-olds? Well, he was determined. He wanted a bunny. All the children lined up behind the big, bold line. It was time to start. On your mark, get set. Ring a ling a ling a ling a ling, that bell rang. And down here where those bunny hutches were, the doors flew open and the little bunnies hopped out. Hop, hop, hop. And the children at the other end, they charged out from behind that big, bold line, and they charged down, down to where the bunnies were. Oh, all the children, except for, for little Josh, the children made it down to where the bunnies were, but little Josh only made it partway. 
He just ran a little bit, and then he stopped. Was he in shock? Was he stunned? Big sister yelled, run, Joshua. And big brother yelled, run, Joshua. And mommy said, oh, Lord, help him. Help him. This is just too sad. And then all of a sudden, do you know what happened? The bunnies that were at this end of the field, when they saw those children charging right at them, they said, yikes, stripes, we're out of here. And they dashed between their legs, and they ran, and they ran right towards who? Joshua, that's right, little Joshua. And those bunnies, they ran right in his path, and he reached down, and he scooped up a bunny, and he held it close to him, and oh, that bunny looked like he was going to wiggle out of his hands. Hold on, Joshua, don't let him wiggle out of your hands. You're so close to having your own little bunny. Oh, Joshua repositioned his hands, held on tightly, and the children at the other end of the field they saw that those bunnies were running right towards Joshua. And one boy saw that bunny that wasn't hopping around. It was still, it was in one place. It was in a little boy's arms, and that was not going to stop him from trying to get that bunny. That boy went right up to Joshua, and he started tugging in his arms. He wanted to wrench that rabbit right away from Joshua's grasp. Boys and girls, the Bible says there's a time for peace and a time for war. And little Josh assessed, this just might be a time for war. And you know what? Lift your arm up for me. Halfway, about halfway between your shoulder and your wrist, there's a handy little item there. What is that? Your elbow. And much to Joshua's family, much to the surprise, of Joshua's family, and much to their delight, he raised that little elbow, and he thrust that little elbow into the boy's ribs when he was trying to get that little bunny. Joshua thought, I, I earned this little bunny. This is my bunny. Nobody is going to wrench this bunny, this bunny from my arms. Oh, yay. Thank you. Joshua was determined, wasn't he? He knew what he wanted, and he didn't let anything stop him from getting that bunny. Can you show us a picture on the screen right now, Mr. Michael? There he is. Joshua and his bunny. If you had a bunny like that, what would you name him? Oreo. What would you name it? Oreo, too. Oreo, that's a good name. Pierce? I would name him Pierce. Good name him Pierce. I wonder why. What would you name him? I would name him um, uh, Tona. Tona, that's creative. Did you have an idea? Ali. All right, and we have a suggestion over here. Brownie. Brownie, one more. Oreo, Oreo, Oreo ice cream. Oh, that sounds yummy. Well, Joshua named that little bunny Blackie. Blackie. He had his own snuggly, cuddly, wiggly-nosed, floppy-eared bunny. Now, boys and girls, this is Easter weekend. And it reminds us that there's an even greater story about determination. It reminds us how Jesus loved you and loved me so much that he was determined to save us and claim us as his own. He even died on a cross for us. Don't you want to say today, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being determined 
to save me. All right, boys and girls, let's get your, your buckets here and collect our offering this morning. going to give it just another minute while the children are finishing. time in our service where we get to lift our voices as one church family, as an offering to our Father in heaven. So I'm going to ask that those who are willing and able to stand with us during our song service, our first song is going to be Above All. Please join us as we sing. Oh, God. 
want to continue singing together and our next song is Jesus paid it all but I wanted to tell you this version there is a beautiful beautiful anthem during the bridge and um, it says um, <laughs> my mind goes blank up here <laughs> oh praise the one who paid my debt and raise this life up from the dead. And we're gonna sing that together. And that's just, that's the biggest, most beautiful part of the song. So I wanted to tell you in advance. I hear the Savior say, strength indeed is small child of weakness watch and pray find in me 
I'll see 
for singing with us. You may be seated at this time. Our dear friend, Princess Brooks, is going to bless us now with special music.
Princess. Wow. Thank you. This is the time of the year when we celebrate Jesus' great victory over sin and death. And uh, we have a ceremony here at the church we call the Procession of Hope, where you will be invited to come down and grab a, a flower and place it at the foot of the cross in memory of a loved one that you've lost in the last year. Some of you submitted names, and we have them. Others we knew of because of our church records. You do not have to have someone's name on this sheet Karen and I are going to read in order to participate nor do we want you to wait until your loved one's name is called. Um, we will have the two fellows, okay? Where are you going to be? All right, would you get there and they'll know where? Because I can't tell, I see you pointing, but. So what we'll ask you to do is to come down these aisles here and then move over towards the cross that way and place your flower there. And uh, I'm just going to ask a little word of prayer before we start this. Father, may this be meaningful and helpful. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. For those of you who would like to participate, go ahead and stand and make your way down. Here's the list of names. Jim Ashlock. Veronica Brucia. Vivian Colvin. Andres Evans. Liz Evans. Irene Fisher. Jim Franks. Alex Fulop. Winford Hooper. Faye Hope. Cheryl Krieger. Helmut Ott. Dorothy Ping. George Roberts. Lauren Vistaunet. Robert Willett. David Young. Valerie Jorgensen. Terry Carmichael. Janae Joy Wong. Rex Worley. Arlen Nelson. Hazel Armstrong. Norman Armstrong. Lorraine Roberts. Lucille Claridge.
Luke 23, verse 33. It says, and when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him, and the criminals, one on the right hand and the other on the left. <clears throat> they crucified him. Matthew says they crucified him. Mark says they crucified him. Luke says they crucified him. John says they crucified him. None of them give any details about nails in the hands or feet. None of them deal with that. Yet, there's a lot of detail prior to this about the scourgings he went through, the plated uh, crown of thorns, those types of things, but not. Then they crucified him. And uh, scholars believe that the reason for that was every person that these folks wrote to would know what that meant. There was no need to describe it, no need to go into any detail. And there are some scholars that believe it is such a sacred thing, God would not even want it described. Jesus dying for the sins of humanity. Jesus dying to conquer death. Jesus taking the penalty of sin upon himself. Jesus would be on that cross for six hours. The first three would be him suffering the wrath of man as they mocked him and derided him. The last three in darkness as he was suffering the wrath of God himself, Jesus taking the punishment of sin upon himself. What the writers of the Bible do discuss about Jesus on the cross is what is known as his seven words. There's more than seven words recorded. Sometimes you will read seven sayings. It's seven things that Jesus said while on that cross. And here they are in order. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Today you will be with me in paradise. Woman, behold your son. Behold your mother. My, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I thirst. It is finished. Father, into thy hands. I commend my spirit. Today we're going to look at three of these sayings. These sayings that Jesus spoke on the cross have tremendous implications upon our lives even today. Let's look at the first one. Luke 23, verse 34. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Now, the amplified version of the Bible, as you know, takes the Greek words and adds enough English words to get the full meaning and intent. And uh, in that translation, it doesn't say Jesus said, it says Jesus prayed. This is a prayer. And the context of the word prayed means over and over and over. Jesus didn't pray it once and that's it. He prayed it for a while. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. And of course, whenever this is brought up and people talk about it, the question is asked, well, who is he saying that about? Is it the soldiers as they are nailing him to the cross? Is it the people there who are mocking him and deriding him? 
Or does it have ramifications beyond that? And could it be he is saying that for all mankind? Well, with just a little perusal through the scriptures, you'll come across Hebrews chapter 6, verse 6. And in that verse, it will say that when we sin, we crucify afresh the Son of God. So when Jesus is saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do, of course it was for the soldiers. Of course it was the crowd that was there. But it is for us as well. Because in God's world, we were there. We were there. Those were our sins Jesus was dying for. In that prayer, we have forgiveness offered us, a gift, a gift. Now, many people wonder, why is it that the good news of the gospel is rejected outright by so many people? Or they put fingers in their ears and they don't want to hear it, don't want to hear it, don't want to hear it. Well, the truth is, before it's good news, it's bad news. And the bad news is, we are sinful, lost people, and we are in trouble. But the average person does not want to hear that. They don't want to hear that they're a sinful person. They look around and see all the other people in their lives. They say, well, I'm just as good as them, better probably than most. And they do not want to hear how sinful they actually are. But that person who has fallen under conviction by the Holy Spirit, and that person whose conscience knows guilt and whose conscience knows shame, that person, when he embraces the forgiveness offered to him by God, will discover a peace they've never had before. Will discover a oneness with God that sin has separated them from. And that person will say, this indeed is good news. Father, forgive them. From the cross, Jesus offers forgiveness. The next expression we're looking at is verse 43. Jesus said, assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Well, the, this part of the story begins in verse 39. It says, then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, if you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus says, assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus gives the gift of forever from the cross. Paradise, an eternal life lived in the presence of God, the angels, and the redeemed of all the ages. And this man, we don't know how deep his faith was. We don't know if he knew anything about Jesus at all, except he was under conviction while he was hanging there on the cross next to Jesus, watching Jesus relate to humanity. And this growing reality, this fear of God comes upon him. The, the, he sees the innocence of Jesus and he gives an expression of faith. And Jesus says, you have forever. I promise you today, you have forever. Jesus gives the gift of forgiveness from Calvary. Jesus gives the gift of forever.
from Calvary. Let's look at the third expression we'll study today. It's found in the Gospel of John, chapter 19. John 19, verse 26. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, that's a reference to John, who is writing this gospel, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. Jesus made a provision for his mother there at the cross. Now, people wonder why he did that. Well, in that day, mothers were taken care of by their sons. She has other sons, but at this point, they're not converted. Jesus may have done this for that reason. Or other scholars believe that Jesus' brothers were older than him as Joseph was married and uh, was a widower. And that's why those boys um, get the impression, picked on Jesus, didn't really appreciate him. Whatever the reason, Jesus knows John. He knows John's love. He knows John's care. He knows that John is going to live a long time. He will live 50 years past this day. And sure enough, he takes Mary to his home. And they have records in writing of her living in his home in the town of Ephesus. And she was cared for. She was loved. She was given security. She was given hope. The promise of the cross is familial love and care. Jesus offers forgiveness. Jesus offers forever. And Jesus offers family. In God's ideal, mother, father, serving Jesus, raised children, serving Jesus, and that is a home angels love to dwell. They want to be there. It is a home where they're expressing their best efforts to be a blessing to each other. And I know right now, some of you do not have a home like that. I know right now, some of you have anything but that. Let me assure you of the power of God to love. God can fill your heart God can fill the void God can make you whole God is all the love we really need The gift of forgiveness, the gift of forever, the gift of familial, familial love. Is there anyone here today who would like to say to the Lord, I'm in, I want those, and by your grace, I want to receive them in my heart today. If you'd like to say that to God, I invite you to stand. Father in heaven, we thank you for the Easter gifts that come to us from Jesus. We ask for forgiveness. We thank you for it. We ask for forever. We thank you for it. And we ask for familial love, and we thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. I'm going to invite you to be seated. We have a special for you. Children have been working very hard to learn how to sign a song. We know this will be a blessing.
In case you don't know, this young lady's my wife, and she's also the children's ministries leader here, and uh, I think she needs a round of applause. For her. <laughs> Children, you did great. You did super, super great. Let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we, I'm asking that you will continue watching over each of these dear people that are here, that you will protect them and bless them, that you will be so real to them that their faith in you would be strong. Please, Lord, hear their prayers and answer those prayers according to your will. We are all praying that you will save our children our family members, our loved ones, and our friends. We thank you, and we pray to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you have a wonderful week. God bless, and go in peace.